Good morning, folks. We've got a follow-up to yesterday's top story, an amazing sight in space, and it's an Electroquake Science Day. We've also got the sun waking up as we begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Everything interesting is up north. Dark coronal hole, bright active region umbral magnetic fields cresting over the limb. Kind of like how the sun looked in early 2011 right before ramping up the remainder of the year. Solar flaring is on the rise due to the incoming active region X-ray production, but thus far just a background enhancement, no flares. Just ahead of those towering arches, a little spot turning in is trying to puff out another active region and just needs a few more weeks of Wheaties, it looks like. We're in full monitor mode and luckily the solar wind is less of a time stealer at the moment. Calm conditions, but back up off the floor to avoid that cosmic ray alert we mentioned was possible yesterday. Sometimes you find things in unexpected places. This crew, including Michael Mann, is 100% human fault global warming. They are taking the salinity changes we saw yesterday, the ones where the southern ocean salty region is piling up and getting saltier, and while freshening areas are getting fresher, and confirming it. Its amplification is confirmed here, and even if they are trying to use it as a clear-cut signal of human-caused changes, and even if we play devil's advocate and give them that one, still means the oceans are doing what they're doing, and that doesn't point to the future they say it does. We're taking a quick jump out to the tornado supernova remnant, a far infrared analysis showing both the brighter near side and the one pointed away. The vortex should be plain to see here, and this is one of those structures in space that commands a more electromagnetic view of the interaction of astrophysical plasmas. Folks, it was two months ago that the latest in a string of confirmatory papers arrived and it was the most definitive. The sun triggers earthquakes via induction, an indirect current amplification through the global electric circuit, which moves the water, metal, and crystals underground, discharges their capacitance with more translocation potential, and we're beyond just the statistics. We now know how it works, which is major points for everyone who said that pre-quake electromagnetic signals could be used to forecast them. That's a pretty good introduction to today's three new papers. First, based on the literally hundreds of papers on this topic now, and the textbook on pre-earthquake processes by the AGU, this one has a way to monitor if these pre-quake changes are also changing the gas chemistry in the region. It's been done with radon, but they also think these processes will show carbon changes. A bit more in the usual realm, we've got a pure analysis of ELF recorded before a major earthquake, all those lower frequency ranges can appear before the shaking, and indeed there are numerous electric and magnetic effects as well, from atmospheric charge density to geomagnetic variation. That's what QuakeWatch.net is for. Same with the tools in our app. It's chapter 7 of our textbook and one of the foundational blocks of the observer's paradigm. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.